Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of the USB hub installation in Golf Mark 7. Here's the hub. You can see that there's some things missing over here and I have a lot of mess over here. So uh, step 1 is disassemble, disassemble parts of the interior. Start with this climatronic frame. You just need to pull it from underneath. There are a couple of clips that uh, hold this uh, piece together. Next you want to remove the front cubby. You want to pry it, uh, pull it upwards. There are two clips. One is here and one is here and best to use some kind of a hook. Here's the cubby. So when you have it in this position, slightly, uh, slightly closed, you can fit something here inside some kind of a hook maybe like this and pull it upwards and with this removed you also want to disconnect the origi original wiring from the uh, from the USB and uh, aux connector additionally I've removed uh, this cubby just to access the fuse uh, fuse box cabin fuse box and I've removed the side cover side cover from from here just to have a better access to this part of the center console a few words about the connectors so this is the standard USB port it's CarPlay en enabled and this is the old connector that was connected to it so this is how it was set up originally in this vehicle and when we look inside this port we can see that we can see that there's a four pin round connector over here and there are two additional pins over here so this is a HSD high speed data transmission for the USB connector and this is ground and 5 volts provided for the USB port because those connections uh, are just data and in USB connection you also need power so over here we had ground and 5 volts from the unit in the glove box now when looking at the new connector which we need to connect to the and to the USB hub we have four pins one is uh, not used we have ground we have uh, five volts which right now will be used as a trigger to turn this on not to power it but just to remotely remotely trigger it and 12 volts needs to be provided from a fuse box or from MIP or from uh, wherever I've done this from the uh, from the um, cabin fuse box so if you would like to add um, a circuit to the fuse box please check my video about retrofitting um, um, reverse camera in the Highline version I've covered the fuse box over there I'm going to be linked it somewhere over here okay so um, I've took this uh, old connector out this is not I have not, I was not cutting it. I will, I will show you what I've done actually. You can do this like so. If you pry it gently, you can actually release the wiring from the from the connector itself. So this is what I've done. I've found a green connector that fits the and that fits the hub to connect it over here without those two additional power pins and um, this is not required this is optional I've just got this connector so I figured why not replacing it but if you are stuck with this kind of connector four pins plus two pins you will have to trim this port a little bit over here you can see this little gap and thanks to this gap you will be able to you will you will be able to connect this like like so let me show you how the red connector looks like right now so we have three wires as i said and i explained this in the part 1 two of those wires are orig original from the uh, mine unit in the glove box and one is added by me 12 volt 
connector and here's the HSD connector with the uh, with the changed plug from purple to green so right now I believe I can connect the hub and we can check if it actually works we will have to adjust coding but that's simple if you have VCDS or OBD11 Okay. Okay, so let's go to list of all modules, scroll down to 5F multimedia system, and over here we are going to check two things. First of all, long coding, and over here there's I believe um, USB setting, so let's use the search function byte 19 USB and it needs to be set to USB iPod. Well, the label is misleading, you, it actually means that uh, the mine unit is connected to an advanced USB device like uh, the CarPlay port or USB hub or um, something else. So this is set to USB iPod, so that's correct. And now let's go back and select adaptation and here interface for external media activation and we want to make sure that both connection 1 and connection 2 are set to activated. This enables the USB 1 and USB 2 option in the media settings, um, media source selection list on the, uh, on the mine unit. Okay, so both those things are set correctly, we can disconnect from the vehicle. And now over here if you press source you will have USB 1 and USB 2. Those are not available right now because we don't have the ports actually connected and nothing is connected to those ports. And let's check if the CarPlay is still working, if AppConnect is still working and it looks like it's fine. We will check it in a minute again. And now we have the USB hub with three connections. This, the purple one is USB 1, I believe the brown is USB 2 and the black is USB 3, which will be not available over here from the media source box, but still it's powered and connected to the system. So if you have an Android Auto device connected over here or something, something else, it will be detected by the system, but will be not available for the user for the driver. So this is connected to the system, but the system is not giving you much access to it. Okay, so I've bought this on AliExpress. This is an USB port, which looks like so, with HSD connector on this side. And I've got two of those to use as USB 2 and USB 3. And the mine USB, well, I cannot use this port, oh, sorry, I cannot use this port because, as I said, this is an advanced USB um, port. It features inside uh, some kind of verification chip for the CarPlay and you can see that it's fairly, fairly long. So I need to use the shorter one, which actually I already have over here in the cubby with the purple connection. It's connected and I've made this custom wiring for it and I believe this should just work. So let me let me connect this to the hub. I will not assemble the interior. I want to just connect it to confirm that it actually works. Okay, so let's check. I have USB drive. It's detected. Uh, actually, it's... <laughs> described as USB 2, but that's fine. Over here, one of them should be USB 1. So which one will it be? This one, USB 1. And this one, if we go to up connect and connect something to it, it's also detected. So all three ports are working. So right now, what I need to do is put those two 
somewhere, maybe in the glove box, and then assemble the interior. Okay, I have it all assembled back together, and you can see that CarPlay is available because here in the front cubby I have the CarLink 4.0 connected to USB 1. And at the same time, if I go to media, I can select USB 2 with the USB drive, which actually right now is somewhere over there. Well, I will need to figure out how to place it correctly, but you can see that both USB ports are working uh, at the same time, are available in the system at the same time. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it for today. Thank you for watching and see you soon.